Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. How is everyone doing? Can I just get a quick confirmation that the audio is good from our new uh, chat moderator, Bishop? It'd be awesome if you can just let me know so I'm not talking to myself. Should be able to hear me and hopefully... Awesome, awesome. Awesome, it's great to be back. How's everyone doing? Hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Larry. Nice to hear some familiar names here in the chat. Hello on Facebook. Hey, Dean on Facebook. Hello, Celia on uh, on YouTube. Nasen, Larry, Surism. Sorry, these names I'm going to butcher. It's awesome to have everyone back. It's been a minute since I've uh, done one of these. Uh, I know that we recently had Alina doing one. Um, and yeah, we've got a new structure in place now. Uh, these are the sound design sessions are going to be on the second Sunday of every month and they are longer than previously they're now two hours long so um, previously we were doing them on a weekly but on a shorter schedule so now people have a bit more time to get questions in or address any topics they want I thought this was a good one to get going and it helps people who are beginners but right through advanced uh, people who are dealing with synthesis and sound design and yeah, it should be fun. Happy New Year. I know it's been a while since even all of that. That feels a lifetime ago. So the uh, structure today will be, um, we are basically going to do the first hour is addressing all of the terminology and busting out the gates. And um, we're going to be looking at what does all of these common, uh, you know, the jargon that gets thrown around a lot with synthesis and sound design, exploring what does it actually mean? Because a lot of the terminology can be very confusing to newbies as well as people who might you know have a lot of these uh, vsts like serum pigments you know, or even native synths they might have these things but there's still things they're not 100 percent clued up on so it's important that you know exactly um how to use the tools that you already have so the first hour roughly i'm going to be focusing on all of the different terminology halfway through i'll answer any questions and um, i'll try and pick up questions as it goes as well but i'll split it into halfway i'll have about five minutes to come and pick up any questions and then depending on how much we get done the first half we'll either keep going with that theme or we'll start to develop a track using the techniques that i've been talking about on this stream so uh, hey simple sam good to have you back as well totally forgot about this nice yeah i think the sunday stream's a nice time for it i know that there is no other stream on the sunday um and so far there's a good amount of interactivity which is great to see um so yeah last time i seen you all was just before the christmas and new year so i hope everyone had a great christmas new year hopefully we're back into uh you know production mode now and people are you know diving headfirst into their doors and learning and practicing and doing a lot of sound design and production so let us know what uh, what you guys are getting up to as well if you have any questions stick them in the chat we have um bishop in the chat who was a, a long time viewer of these streams as well as many others so he's here as well if you have any questions that you'd like to ask brent uh brent number two will refer to him as just uh, ask away please um so yeah this should be really really fun um, I've got Facebook and uh, YouTube and Twitch comments, so doesn't matter where you're watching from, I should be able to answer any questions that come in. I'm just going to turn the big cam off and go to the door screen here. And for the purposes of today, I'm going to be using a combination of different synths. We've got stuff from Arturia. Um, the reason I think that the wavetable stuff is really good for illustrating the points from a day is basically it's it's very visual. So we'll use Arturia's pigments. We'll also use uh, serum for a little bit. Um, and we're going to use some uh, emulations of classic stuff like Quadra from uh, Cherry Audio. I think we did a stream on this, you know, not so long before the end of the year last year. This is a multi timbral synth. Again, what is that? What does multi timbral mean? Hopefully, you'll know stuff by, like that by the end of this stream. Um, and then we got Analog Lab as well. And again, these are emulations from the V Collection. All of these can be accessed on the ADSR store, so um, there will be links to this either in the chat, in the description, or head over to the ADSR store underneath the plugins section of the website. Um, and also, if you have any of these things, feel free to follow along because it always helps when you sort of put it into a practical sense. Yes, I'm using Studio One. I'll keep going between Studio One and Ableton depending on the nature of the stream. So, yeah. Um, so... 
let's let's scroll down I've got quite the list here of terminology to get through these are by the way these are two hours long so there's plenty of time to address anything that I feel uh, people will have to answer um, and always you can catch up after the stream so don't worry if you haven't been able to tune in live with me today right then so with that that out of the way I think we can make a start so um just before we make a start it would be awesome if if you're enjoying the content um if you can help us out by subscribing liking the video and turning on notifications for future live streams because these videos are completely free and we do take suggestions from you guys and also if you feel like you want to be part of the community you should head over to the discord server where exactly you have a sense of community and you can ask questions and maybe get things in for submissions before live streams as well which is really useful um so yes, uh, let me just check my list here. I've got like a full list of terminology. Like I said, some people might know this stuff. Some people um, might not have a clue what any of this is, and that's the purpose. Hopefully, it's a bit of a concise guide for every type of user is what I'm hoping, um, like a comprehensive guide. You can maybe even revisit this if that's helpful. There's the link to the Discord in the chat, and that will do. Uh, that'll do as well to make a. A move. It looks like we've got a famous artist in the chat as well, Pablo Picasso. Hello. <laughs> okay. So, synthesis, sound design. It's a huge topic. I feel like it can be extremely overwhelming when you are starting out in production because a, a big part of production is sound design. There's obviously another huge side to it, which is mixing, mastering. We have different streams that are till it, all these things. We've even got Alina who does the um the more writing side of it as well so we're trying to cover cover every base with these the different type of content here but the sound design i feel is the one that probably stops most people in the tracks because you can dedicate a lot of time to learning stuff like uh, compression eq saturation spatial effects but i think synthesis is that one that gets overlooked for a little bit of time and then eventually one way or another you find out that you have to learn some of the fundamentals um, and that's where i believe that my stream comes in handy so with that in mind, we can start diving into some of the terminology. I'll give you a flyby tour of the different definition, well, the different titles, and then the definitions will follow. But we're going to be looking at things like oscillators, additive, ADSR, arpeggiators, cutoff, envelope, filter, FM, LFO, pole, VCO, DCO, monophonic, paraphonic, duophonic, polyphonic, multitombral, noise oscillators, resonance, waveforms, sine wave, sawtooth, Subtractive synthesis, triangle wave, unison, VCA, wavetable, pulse width, granular, physical modeling. And if we can get all that done without it being too overwhelming, then that will have been a very successful two hours. If there's anything that you maybe didn't hear on the list and you want me to try and address again, note it down in the comments and we'll definitely come to it. Okay, so I'll just do one final check here and then we'll make a roll with it then. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, the Facebook chat as well. I think we've got some very loyal fans over there by the looks of it. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to start off with, yeah, poll. Uh, poll is a good one. I think that was something that's, it can be, a lot of these, uh, the terminology here, by the way, might make crossovers into mixing as well. So I think we'll start off with uh, oscillators. So I'll try and do all of the examples here across multiple devices so that it seems to, cover bases for people who might have different things available to them. So oscillators, we've got oscillators here in pigments, by the way, just to really narrow things down. I'm in the engine type, I'm in analog, but you would find oscillators in these other engines, but the oscillators here, and then we have oscillator A, oscillator B here inside of Serum. Um, here is a completely different looking synth from Cherry Audio. I have to admit this sounds absolutely phenomenal. And then the oscillators here are again slightly different, but you see here we have VCO, that's a vo voltage controlled oscillator. And then we have like a routing matrix for at the end here, the two VCOs go into a, a filter and an amplifier, we'll get to that. And then on the analog lab side of things we have um, we have like presets which then go to the actual synth and then we'll eventually open these up. Um, I think if you go on to the edit preset, you can open the actual device. Um, oh, I do own the full version, but it's not allowing me to view it. But they also have oscillators as well. I can drag them in from the collection and section. But we'll start with pigments because it's really quite uh, visual. Hey, Hydrotech, good to have. It's great to have familiar names back here. I hope you're doing well. 
Okay, so oscillators. Here's, I've tried to make a dictionary description sum as on the money as possible. And then the most important thing today is I'm going to try and show you what the terminology means, bust the jargon, and then I'm going to show you how to use these, um, these you know, techniques or these functions and also why you want to be using them. And that'll probably be in the following hour so we can show exactly why it is you want to use these things. So an oscillator produces an audio signal with an audible pitch. This is different from other things like LFOs, which don't produce an audible pitch, and we'll get on to that. So an oscillator produces an audio signal with an audible pitch, and the speed of the oscillator, a thing that oscillates, <laughs> the speed of the oscillator is increased to determine a perceivable pitch. This is basically the oscillator. You want to think of it as it's the very starting, the, the base, the foundation of every single uh, synth preset. Literally, a preset has no legs. It won't really function or make a sound um, without great um, you know, detail uh, without an oscillator. It's literally impossible. So uh, a good way to think about an oscillator in a real-world scenario is um, a guitar string. Even if you're not a guitarist, this analogy will be familiar. A guitar string, you got a peg on the on the neck, and when you tune that peg, when you turn it, either one way or another, the pitch is changing. And what happens is, as the um, you turn the peg and the string gets tighter, the pitch rises. And basically, that's exactly the same concept with an oscillator. With an oscillator, what you're doing with the audio signal is you speed up the oscillator's um, signal so that the, the pitch will also become more perceivable. So basically, think of the oscillator as the foundation of the house. Without that, nothing is going to have um, any existence. So the oscillators inside of pigments are here. Now, where it can get a bit confusing is oscillators also have other things with inside of them. So we have oscillator 1. By the way, oscillator 2, oscillator 3, these are identical to oscillator 1. So we'll just focus on oscillator 1. So oscillator 1, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of these sort of shapes here. And again, might be familiar to a lot of people. Some people might think, why does this look like you know a stripped-down version of Star Wars? So these are waveforms. And basically, these are different ways that the oscillator will emit sound. Um, um, and again, the oscillator has to go through various other stages to emit the sound, um, like filtering and envelopes. And again, hopefully by the end of this, all these um, phrases will make more and more and more sense. I'm even happy to drop the, um, the, uh, the PDF that I've created here for this stream into the Discord if you guys, if anyone feels like they might need it, you know, as like an educational resource. So that's what oscillator means. Um, and again, it might be really, really um, basic stuff to some people, or some people might not have a clue, and that's what this stream is all designed around. If some of you are absolute pros, hopefully by the end of it when we're going in additive FM granular, hopefully that'll be a little bit more tasty. So we move from the oscillator to a, um, a waveform. I'm just going to go in here, by the way, and go for a default preset. Da, 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 da. Okay, default preset. What that means is we've just got the most basic form of a sound here. Again, I'll go back to the analog. and um, We've just got one oscillator with the volume up. So all you're hearing now is this. I'll even turn off the filter because we don't need that. I'll turn off the utility engine. I'll turn off this. These effects aren't actually on because they're not being, the dry wet's not up. I'm trying to keep it bare bones. So the oscillator, as we've just looked at, it has these various waveforms. So the waveforms, there is actually pretty much an infinite number of waveforms because we can combine multiple waveforms and stack them and it's it's a very um, infinite process, really, but in, in its purest form, um, they're all just combinations of sine waves, and, and a sine wave is this wave here. Um, I've even got a, a sine wave is just the most basic and pure wave form. Um, these waves here are basically sounds that you hear throughout your day, um, and they're basically captured here in their purest form for the use of synthesis so that we can sculpt and mold them into sounds and presets. So the sine wave here is the most pure form. If we look at it, it um, the, all these waveforms use a combination of odd and even harmonics. And what happens is, as we go from one of these waveforms here, which is very pure and round, to something like this, as we can see, this has got a lot more sharp edges, and the, the general shape of it is quite different. And again, 
The same with these waves here. If you notice, this wave here is actually quite similar to this wave. All that happens is the peaks here get sharpened off to what, if you were to think back to maths, this literally is the shape of a triangle. Hence, the name of this one is a triangle wave. And this is a sine wave. So what happens is these oscillators just get more and more harmonically rich. And the, that's a really good thing because it means that it allows you to sculpt your sound further. Traditionally, uh, sine waves are used for um, more for like really pure sounds, you know, subs, sub bass, sub drops. They're great for actual sound design applications. If you're thinking about stuff like leads and pads, you're probably actually leaning more towards um, harmonically rich waveforms. And again, all of these waveforms run with inside of an oscillator. So hopefully we're all on a, a bit of a track here with oscillators and waveforms. I'll have a big recap as well at the end of the two hours to, uh, to come back around on this whole thing. So there we go, there's waveforms. I think what would be good now is if we can hear these. So let's have a listen. It's quite low. I always say on these streams, if you can use headphones, that's pretty helpful. So here it is pitched up. I'm just going to have a drink because I'm really thirsty. <laughs> so, there's a sine wave. I'm just playing a middle C. Let's go to the triangle. You'll hear that basically the triangle is, is almost the sine wave, right, with just more harmonics going on essentially. As you can hear, it's just got a little bit more top end, it's a little bit brighter, and that comes in handy later on because what we're dealing with here we're inside of a, a sort of multi-synth engine with pigments. The reason I love pigments so much is it does all of the things. It literally does everything from subtractive to additive to FM to granular. So if I had one recommendation from the day, if you don't already own pigments, it would be a really, really good investment. You can get it on the ADSR store and quite often there is... Um, you know, good discounts on pigments, so hold out maybe if you can't, if now's not a good time for you to get it, because there might be something come up um, throughout the year where you can purchase it at a discount. Um, so pigments is great for that reason, because it literally covers all of the aspects. So sine wave, then we get a bit harmonically richer, and then we go through to some more waveforms, like sawtooth, um, square wave, um, and pul pulse width shapes. You can hear that one is so drastically different from the last two, and that's because, obviously, of the harmonics that it's producing. This is actually just the same wave, but in a different uh, polarity. And then that there is probably the most um, harmonically rich waveform, really. Um, and the reason that we probably want to use a harmonically rich waveform in subtractive synthesis is it just gives us a sound that is bigger has more depth to it, is more interesting, and in most cases more, more versatile. You can do more with it. So I, I used a phrase there, subtractive synthesis, um, and that is a form of synthesis, and we've got the, the terms with inside of synths themselves which are quite universal, like ADSR, envelope, oscillators, waveforms, and then we actually have types of synthesis themselves. So subtractive synthesis, right, this begins with a complex waveform, so something like a square or a sawtooth, and with with rich harmonics, exactly like what I've just been demonstrating. And what you do is you basically subtract things away from that waveform. Um, so subtractive synthesis, if you think right back to, um, you know, pictures of huge, like, um, you know, the massive walls that you might have seen Hans Zimmer with, or like, um, I'm trying to think of, um, like, yeah, just go with that hands in one because I think that's a, a thing that's lurked around Reddit and Instagram for a long time. Those huge modular walls, basically what you do is you take a waveform in its pu purest uh, waveform. It's a, a voltage-controlled oscillator, and that's where basically it's creating an audio signal from electricity coming from literally a plug in the wall. And then you route that through various things like filters and envelopes to shape the sound over time and change the way that it emits. Um, so that's what subtractive synthesis is. You take a waveform from an oscillator, which are the two things that we've covered so far, and then you basically start taking things away from that waveform to shape it. Um, and that's probably the best way you can... It's a bit like, it if you th again, another uh, terrible analogy by me, but if you think about 
um, clay and you're going to make something, you start with this massive block of clay and you slowly, you know, use your hands to make it into something like a bowl and you're refining it and you're changing the shape over over time. There's a, another way of kind of thinking about it. So with that in mind, probably the best thing to go on to next is our envelope or ADSR. So I'm going to stick with the one oscillator and make this super, super basic uh, for now. Let's use, um, yeah, let's use like a square or a, a triangle, something with a bit more harmonics. I'm going to head down in the envelope here. If we ignore envelope two and envelope three, because these are an exact replication of this one here, the thing to bear in mind with a lot of these um, VSTs, these um, synthesizers within the digital domain, is um, they have a, a ton of features which are duplicated just to give you more optionality so that when it comes to creating sounds, you have more and more options than ever. So it's great in terms of flexibility, but it can be confusing from the get-go to see, like, why is there three of these and four of these? And in this section here, why is there, like, envelope one, envelope two? They're all just repeats of each other, like, for 99% of the time. So this first one here, envelope VCA. So an envelope controls the duration of the audio signal uh, that is produced. So essentially, this waveform that I'm playing here, oscillator one, the square wave. Someone asking, is the square wave the most harmonically rich waveform? Um, in a sense, probably yes. I'm sure that you can probably stack it up and add more things to it, um, but in its rawest state, like I was talking about, these wave um, these waveforms are the, the most raw state uh, waveforms for oscillators, then yeah, I'd say so. If you listen to all the waveforms, your ear's a good indication of that. These are both very sharp, but they may mainly have a lot of high mid content, whereas this square wave, this has got quite a lot more body to it, but it's also really harmonically rich in the top end. So I guess you could say square wave, or maybe a saw wave because they're great for stacking. You can get even more harmonically rich. It could be a combination of a couple of these waveforms. So once we've got our waveform with inside of our oscillator, we take the oscillator into one of these uh, one of these envelopes, and this controls the duration of the uh, of the audio signal that is produced over time. So what I mean by that, if I hold this note down. I am using just this keyboard down down here, by the way. If I hold it down and I don't release it, that will continue playing until the end of time or until my uh, computer decides to give way, which is hopefully around about April when they bring out those new Apple uh, Mac Pro M1s. Um, so I don't want to count on it during a stream. So it controls the duration of the audio signal over time. So when I, when I play that signal there, it just won't stop. So what we need is we need something to tell the audio signal, you're going to play for this long, and I want you to you know slowly decrease here, and then once you hit here, I want you to be finished. I don't want you to be playing anymore. And a good example of that is when we are using the ADSR. So envelope, ADSR. So ADSR... Obviously, ADSR is the name of the channel that you're currently on now, and that means Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. So the great thing, about, by the way, about pigments is when you are on individual parameters, we get a rough definition, um, like an approximation of what these mean. So this is the time that is needed to go from the start to the maximum level. So Attack, think of it like, um, again, coming back to another instrument analogy, a guitar or, um, say, a wind instrument, it's the time that it takes you to actually increase the amplitude so here if we um make the attack longer the duration of it it means that when i press the midi keyboard now the oscillator the waveform is going to take longer for it to get to its maximum level versus if it was like this instantly it's going to play at its maximum level so if i do a slow area a slow attack at the end of one second there roughly it got to its maximum level that's really good for those pads or sounds that evolve slowly over time. So the attack is good for that. In the opposite direction, if you wanted something like uh, John O'Connell, this is just the... <laughs> that's brilliant. Where are you from out of curiosity, John? This is very funny. Um, I'll try and put the poshest voice on possible. So um, the, the opposite side of the attack, right, would be... If you had a very, very, or literally no attack at all, you'd be able to create a very uh, plucky or a sharp sound. So that would be excellent for stuff like plucks 
or like a hard bass, something like that, you know? So then we have the other controls. So the decay is the time needed to go from the max to the sustain level. So basically think of the sustain as the decay will control how long it takes for the, again, this is great because of how you can see the, the visual aspect inside of pigments. The decay is how long it takes to get from the um, maximum level when, once the uh, attack has reached its maximum level. So once the oscillator has reached its max level, the decay is how long it'll take to re reach this area here. So if I increase the decay, we see that from the max level of the oscillator to get to here, you control the duration. So then the sustain is how long it's going to stay at that level. And we can bring that level down. So we can see we're starting to shape this waveform here. So that's the ADS. And then lastly, the release is the time it takes the envelope to go back to zero. So zero is no sound whatsoever. So if you had a long release, you can see the tail of the envelope here is drawn out. So that means that when I release my finger off the keyboard, it'll play for a further seven seconds. Which actually is quite a long time when I think about it. Um, so there's a, a, a rough uh, explanation of the ADSR applied to a single oscillator. So while it might sound really primitive at the minute with just a really basic oscillator, if you imagine this with um, multiple oscillators, uh, different types of oscillators, you can start to create some interesting sounds that evolve differently over time. So there is the oscillator, the waveforms, and the um, your main envelope and VCA. So let's change the um, the waveforms here, and let's change the waveforms, but keep the same ADSR, and we'll make some variations to the ADSR and see how it impacts the sound of each waveform. So here's the sine wave. To change the release because it's actually dragging over it's so long hello from Sheffield John not too far from you So there we go, that is the envelope, and we'll be coming back to that a lot, I'd imagine. We've got a couple of other controls here, by the way, that people might um, notice. Attack curve. These are some more detailed, um, like these more detailed breakpoints within um, these envelopes that have came about fairly recently in the digital domain. We did have control over these back in the 80s on certain um, digital synths. But you see this, this, to reach the attack here, we can even control that curve so we can either broaden the attack or sharpen it. I never realised that you're Larry Boy, John. Ah, right. <laughs> quite, quite close to home style then. So there we go, attack curve. And then as you can imagine, the decay curve is exactly the same thing, but applied from the maximum amplitude down to the decay signal. And then we have ADR, which basically gets rid of the, uh, it just ignores the sustain control, basically. Um, it's useful for certain types of uh, tracks, uh, patches. Hi from South Africa, DJ Smiley. Nice to have you here. Hopefully uh, we can help you learn something. If you have any questions, uh, anyone, please feel free to ask them. Okay, so we will get into making some good music probably within the next half an hour to 45 minutes um, but this is um, the envelope covered the oscillator and the waveform so the next thing that we've got to do is we have to head into a filter and the filter is here and again what do you know we got two filters again it's an exact replica of this filter it's just more optionality so that we can create more interesting patches so what we can do is we can take the oscillator and the oscillator has a path that it reaches the output so the main output is up here for our global volume so what we do is we go from the oscillator and the oscillator heads into an envelope and then the, os the oscillator heads into the, the filter or rather it heads into the filter first. So let's um, have a look at the filter. So the filter basically is like an EQ and you can shape the sound of the, um, like we previously shaped the sound of the uh, preset or the, the patch over time, the filter changes its sound within the EQ spectrum. So suppose that we have a really harmonically rich oscillator what, like we have here, but you want to get rid of some of the stuff that might be a little bit too uh, bright, we can filter out that oscillator 
by um, selecting this cutoff here. So here we go, we just uh, change the cutoff here and there's a point at which the frequency cuts off and that's the start of the pole. And again, we'll get on the pole as well. But this is basically the function of the cutoff will change the sound of, it's almost like, again, come back to another analogy, it's like palm muting a guitar or if you have a piano and you're playing the keys and you put your hands on the strings, it dampens the sound of it because you're basically um, changing the sound of the actual instrument's frequency response. Um, oh, I'm great to see that you're excited to learn sound design. It's awesome. Every second Sunday of the month if you're interested in bookmarking it. Does pigments have analog wavetables? Yes, they're analog. Uh, they're virtual analog because obviously they're in the digital domain, but I believe that they're virtual analog, yeah. So here's the filter on and off. So I've got the cutoff here, which is basically a control that allows me to tell the filter I want you to filter out any of the sound from... 2000 hertz if the hertz is a little bit confusing i would recommend maybe um going on google and looking for an eq spectrum and you can learn some of the most fundamental frequencies you've got lows low mids mids high mids and high frequencies you got other stuff as well like top end you know sub frequencies but if you know them there's fundamental frequencies that come with a lot of them like 60 hertz to 100 for sub 100 hertz for kick drums your mid information is the majority of your instruments uh, percussion for the top end so that's what the actual cutoff frequency is here so 2000 hertz is where or 2k is where i'm cutting off this waveform <laughs> Okay, and if I bring the filter up, it brings in more of the high-end content. So without the filter, it's almost a bit too sharp on my ears. So that's the reason that you actually have the filters, is to make it more pleasant, but to also shape the sound. So there we go. Um, we have a basic understanding and concept of the, uh, of the filters. I've even got a, a dictionary definition, I believe, of the cutoff. So yeah controls the cutoff of the filter um, acting acting as a filler. But the main thing to remember is that we have a pole. So the pole here, another little drop down menu, multi filter mode. So this filter here, a multi mode filter, basically this is a filter that is um, a versatile filter that you can use with many, many different modes. So the modes are basically different um, filter shapes as well as um, different slopes. So the slope or the pole, this determined, the pole determines the slope of a filter start and end state determined by dB per octave. So LP24, what on earth does that mean? That stands for low pass 24. So it means it's going to let the lows pass through this filter because think of it in the opposite sense, we're actually filtering out the high end. So we are allowing the lows to pass through by filtering off the, the high-end frequencies. And the 24 stands for a 24 decibel per octave um, pole filter. And we can change that to a 12 or a 36. And what it does is, if you see the visual aspect here, that there is becoming a little bit more like a horizon line as it went to 12. So it went to 24. It's turning into more of like a descending shape and 36 it's much much steeper so what this does is it allows you to cut off that those frequencies at a more strict rate by basically changing the start and end of the filter over the duration of the frequency curve so low pass lets the lows pass through cuts off the highs the high pass does the opposite of that so it lets the highs pass through and cuts off the lows so again let's have a listen here <laughs> So what I'm doing is, it's very sharp sounding, we're actually going to remove the lower frequencies of the spectrum now. And you start to get into like synth hi-hat territory here. If you had a really tight envelope, um, you could basically start to emulate the sound of... If this was tuned up, you can start to understand that these frequencies here are some of the very top end frequencies within inside of music production. So that's a high pass. Um, I tend to find that high pass is most useful on stuff like pads, uh, leads, stuff where you don't need low end uh, information because in production, 
if you've got lots of low end information building up, you're going to you're going to run straight into masking, and masking is where we have conflicting uh, sound sources with the same fre frequency regions occupied. So if you imagine that you have a pad, you got a bass, you got a lead, you got a pluck, these sessions can get enormous. Uh, trust me. And if you don't filter them and you don't EQ them we run into masking errors and it starts to create conflict within the mix and this is where things just start to fall down and the reason for that is a pad or a pluck it doesn't need that low-end information because it's got a specific role within inside of the track and the production and its job is you know the pad is you know it's, it's sorting out the, mi the mid information the pluck is maybe the high mids and the bass is obviously the low mids and, and the low frequencies so that's the reason that we have cutoffs with different uh, poles and different types of filter modes we've also got bandpass and notch filters and you can see what these look like so again pigments great synth for understanding all of these concepts so we can see the uh, the bandpass and the notch filters here have both got different uh, slope fillers so all got 24 12 and 36 states and the high and the low pass have got a 6 db slope which is probably the weakest start and end slope that you can get so there we go filters a bit of a fly stop tour it can get a lot more complicated than that because we're obviously looking at the modes here but if you go into the uh, filter types here we have all of these different filters now these are the same concept We'll not look at these too much today, but basically what these are doing is exactly the same thing, but they just have a different character to the sound. Um, I'm trying to think of a good representation. Horrible analogies I'm coming up with today, but if you imagine you've got many different types of pasta, different shapes pasta, they've all got a slightly different flavor and shape to them. Haven't they? So basically the different filter types are exactly that within sound and synthesis. So these filters here, are all quite unique. Some of them are um, emulations from famous synthesizers, like the SEM filter from the SEM chip. This is from like Oberheim synthesizers. Jupiter 8, again, from Roland. And then we got stuff like comb, phase, form, and filters. And these are very unique in terms of their, their shapes when they are filtering the sound over the uh, frequency spectrum. So let's have a listen to how different a form and filter is. That's radically different. You can imagine this would be great for those sounds that require the character. Um, and it's good. That can almost define the sound of a production, to be honest, you know. That's one oscillator going through a filter and a, a simple, really simple VCA. You can see that it doesn't take much to create a good patch here. We haven't even brought in any modulation. We haven't brought in any different effects. So the filters can all be thought of as just like different flavors, essentially. That's a really good analogy for the majority of music production and synthesis, to be honest. We'll go back to our multi-mode filter for the, for the rest of this. I'm seeing some... Which one is spaghetti? <laughs> I love pigments. I think it's perfect for learning and understanding, especially... Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more that um, they are... Extre pigments is extremely visual but it's it's fantastic for a beginner right through to someone who wants to be going down the sound design rabbit hole for days on end different brands of hot sauce <laughs> which filter i really like that yeah come up with your own analogies anything that'll help you remember it is is good basically the sam is spaghetti egg and macaroni <laughs> yeah these are great maybe we can make like a dummy's guide to synthesis but uh, like related to stuff uh, I'm not entirely sure on the pigments. Maybe uh, uh, Bishop on the moderator chat might be able to give you a confirmation for that on the website. Uh, or you can head over to the ADSR site, uh, DJ Normal Norman, and that'll give you a pricing guide there, I think. And there's also lots of pigments preset packs on there as well. If you want to learn more, a good way to learn about this is to dive into a preset pack and see what's actually been done. So there we go. We have the oscillator, we have the waveform, we have the envelope, we have ADSR, we have filter, cutoff, resonance, and poles. So it's quite a broad spectrum of stuff that we've looked at there, but I think that's starting to cover bases. So what I'm going to do now, before we head into anything else, um, like different types of um, synthesis concept, is I'm going to show you how we can build a patch, a synth preset patch, using all of the things that we've looked at, like literally what I just listed there, because let's face it, the sound that we currently have is incredibly primitive, and there's a lot more we could do with it by just working with duplicates and slightly more interesting shapes. 
So we have three oscillators. We should probably take advantage of at least one more of them. So let's start with um, a triangle wave. And I'm going to show you how I would create a pad uh, by using the different wave, uh, different wave shapes and also the maybe changing the envelopes VCA and maybe using different filters. So here we go. We have again, actually, I tell you what, let's start with a default patch all over again just to just to really go back to basics. The annoying thing is the default patch loads the unison and the utility engine we don't really need. So go back into the analog. So here we go. Oh yeah, there's the link to the uh, Pigments 3 on the store there for um person who is asking in the description. It's always a great price for the amount of development that's gone in this. And for anyone who has pigments, they can vouch that all of the updates, I think, have been free once you've owned them, which is incredible. The Arturio and those companies who really, really care about um, their, their their fans and their people who use their products, which is awesome to see. Okay, so got this oscillator here. Let's go triangle. I want to begin with a basic triangle wave and shape the sound of it over time. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to change the uh, decay length, but I'm going to reduce the sustain and increase the release to... Uh, about a, a second long, and there's the attack. You can also drag it here if you if you prefer that. the volume. Okay. And we have our, so we got our oscillator, we've picked our waveform, we're going into an envelope, which is shaping the sound over time, and we have a filter. So with this, uh, what I want to do is I want to use two oscillators and I want to have one that is really getting the sparkly stuff in the top end. So let's take something a little bit more harmonically rich. Okay. And that's going through the, um, the same envelope, the same VCA. I could use a different envelope for that. We'll look at that later on. What I could do is I could even change the uh, tuning of this waveform and this oscillator. So this is going to really go for them top end ones. Okay, um, I've got my volume on this a little bit low. Okay, uh, I'm tempted to keep, you know, use something else, but I'm just going to stick with exactly what we've used so far. And we've got the cutoff here. We can maybe use a different. So I maybe filter everything out from around 100, 120, 150. Okay, so there we go. Oscillator is going in here. Let's use one more oscillator, shall we? Let's use the sine wave and pitch this one down. So I'm pitching this down 12. Why am I doing 12 semitones? So 12 semitones equals an octave. So in music, we've got the 12 tone, uh, well, in, within Western music, we've got the 12 tone um, musical system, C to C. Um, eight notes, but we've got sharps and flats when we're talking about semitones. So if I pitch anything down 12 semitones or divisions of that, so 12 or 24, 36, 48, either way, we will introduce um, different frequency regions because a frequency region is determined by the pitch um, of that instrument. So let's bring in the sine wave. Remember, the sine wave is the most pure waveform. Let's bring that one in 12 semitones down. So we've got like um, we've got a mid, a high, and a low kind of. That's a good way to think of it. So it's kind of multi. It's a multi synth patch. Um, yes. Can you do the inverse of an envelope in pigments? 
I think you can, yes, uh, but it, you can't do it in envelope. You can do it in functions here. Um, you've got bipolar modes and you can invert the signal. Um, anyone who's a little bit confused, the, the function here is like a more complex version of um, an envelope. Um, and you could use that as your main VCA to shape the sound. Hope that answers your question. Okay, so we've got the patch here. And one immediate way we can make any of this more interesting, whilst this is not really a massive synth sound design thing, is we could add some effects. So I think the majority of people will understand reverb, even if you're a complete newbie novice. Basically what this will do is put the sound into a space, into an environment. Um, and this is a great way to add a sense of depth to a patch. And I have really good stock reverbs on here. I don't know if they're convolution or algorithmic. So basic, basic part. And yeah, we could keep adding that. Obviously, you know, we could add delay, we could add chorus, etc. I don't want to spend too much time on the effects, but I want to move on to the next part. And I believe this is the part that gets most people stuck when it comes to um, starting out with synthesis and sound design. I want to make this patch more interesting in terms of how it um, evolves over time. And I'm not on about the envelope, the, the duration of which the entire sound will play back. Um, I'm on about how the sound will develop. And the way we want to do that is by using something like a modulator. So a modulator, just think of it as one thing that tells something else to do something, you know. Um, it points the finger and says, hey, do this. So a really really good way to do that is to use something called a low frequency oscillator. So we've been talking about oscillators for the best part of 45 minutes now. These are oscillators and hopefully that's starting to become quite understandable. Oscillators are a sound source, they're the foundation, they're the beginning of the patch and we have a selection of waveforms. So a, a, an LFO a low frequency a low frequency oscillator well surely that's an oscillator again and you'd be correct so a low frequency oscillator is exactly the same as a vco so a vco is a, a voltage control oscillator which is essentially what we're working with here there's digital and voltage but that's what we're working with here um, but the thing with a, an lfo is the signal is at a much lower frequency hence low frequency oscillator so it has no distinct tone, um, and therefore the reason an LFO is useful is it gets um, the same shape. So if anyone is looking at this now, and again, this has been, I know some people were saying at the start they're going to be taking notes, or if you're watching this back, this here is a sine wave. So this here, we can use the sine wave shape to modulate another parameter. So again, modulation, we're going to use the LFO to basically say to someone, do this. So... It's working, it's like it's sending an errand, essentially. So what we can do is we can use the LFO to modulate something. A really, really common uh, version of this in synthesis is to use an LFO to modulate the filter and it, a specific parameter within inside the filter is the cutoff. If I just click on the plus bar, on the plus icon here, or if I head into LFO1, because we're going to use LFO1, we can apply modulation to as you can see an absolute huge number of things so we can basically use the LFO here to uh, modulate the cutoff which is awesome um, so if I come out of this now we'll notice that you see how this all of a sudden is moving back and forth let's have a listen Let's try and change the mode to a low pass. Awesome. So, we've added some interest to this patch because the sound is now evolving over time, isn't it? It's got, um, it's got interest and it's exactly doing what it says in the tin. It's modulating. So what we can do is, with the LFO, we can change the speed at which that sine wave is running. You see this again, pigments is great because of how illustrative it is. I love all the colors. It's a, it's a really, really good environment to learn. So what we can do is we can speed that rate up. And then look, this is moving much faster. And then look, 
our modulation destination is moving a lot faster. So let's hear that now. So immediately, we got a lot more interest going on here, haven't we? And if we change the cutoff, the modulation will stay the same. It's telling you something the same thing to cut off. We're just changing the filters, cut off destination. So to show you the endless possibilities here, honestly, it's it's amazing. We could use the LFO here, LFO two. We could use that to actually move the LFO while LFO one is modulating the cutoff. So we got LFO one doing exactly what is right now, and then I want to use an LFO to modulate the actual position of the cutoff like I was just doing with my mouse and as I'm doing right now. So let's use an LFO2 to do that then. Um, let's say, uh, or we can, I'll show you how we can do it if we come to the plus icon just to show you the different ways. Let's say um, we want you to move this like this. And we can basically use these multiples because again at the start I was saying we have loads and loads and loads of these um, duplicates. Also, you see how it starts to fill out here in the mod matrix, the mod strip. We can see the different speeds of stuff. So this LFO2 is at a different rate to LFO1. So one of them is opening and closing the cutoff really fast, and one of them is moving the cutoff slowly. Let's have a listen. You can hear the difference. It's great. What if we change the shape of the LFO from a sine wave? Well, that's our wave waveform here. So look, it says sine. That one's less noticeable because this one is changing the speed of the cutoff at a less severe rate and uh, it's not doing it as fast. So let's use the uh, waveform of the first one, you'll hear it a lot more noticeably. We even get some pitch modulation, so interesting. We'll not go into sample and hold. die out slowly because of the VCA. Pretty, pretty cool. So the difference, uh, good question, I presume that's from Bish. Difference between an envelope and a LFO, that's a really good question. So the LFO um, usually has a defined shape. So um, if we look here, we have a selection of like sine waves and triangles. And we can do various things to it, you know, we can fade the shape, which is good. But with the envelope, we have a direct control over attack, decay, sustain and release, which are um, parameters that give us more detail to shape the sound over time. Um, and usually the routing of um, a synth engine is the oscillator will head into the the, the VCA rather than um, the, the, the LFO. So it's it's a combination of shapes and also durations and um, a, co a combination of factors but I'd say mainly it's um, the, the nature of how the shape of the envelope is created versus the LFO shape um, but there's lots of different sort of interpretations I suppose but think about it like that you, you can't change the um, the amplitude on the VCA shape of the LFO over time and yes, LFO repeats. So here we go. This is a really basic preset. And we've got a little bit of effects going on. It's a pad. And this is put into use roughly our first hour of learning of oscillators, waveforms, envelopes, LFOs, filters. There's everything you need to make a pretty decent patch, if I'm completely honest. And then really, you start putting this through some cool effects. Let's add another one. Uh... Chorus is always cool. Chorus is a, f a form of modulation. Um, and this basically changes the phase to spread out the sound in the stereo field. Makes you think of the 80s, I find. Thank you. 
And yes, you could use an LFO to probably modulate the rate of the hertz there, I'd imagine. Hey, you can, would you look at that? <laughs> use LFO3 to modulate that. Um, let's go for uh, unipolar. This means that it'll only go in one direction rather than back and forth. We could apply that to the filler as well, that way it'll only go from the start of the cutoff frequency to the end of it. So let's have a listen to what happens when. So this is going a bit too fast, this LFO3. If we slow down the rate of that, it'll slowly change between the rate and the hertz, which is really, really good. Um, so, and we can even key track it as well. So it'll follow my movement on the keyboard, which is awesome. <laughs> I'm not doing anything with anything else here. I'm just letting all the modulators do the work now. So there we go. Cool sounding patch, cool sounding pad. It's a combination of three LFOs. We got the main VCA, three oscillators with different waveforms. And I think a lot of people will understand what these things mean now. Um, hey, uh, Jim, Jim, Jamil, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Thanks, awesome to have you here. Appreciate the, uh, the kind words. Uh, so something we can do to make this instantly a lot a little bit wider again is we can add uh, some voices to the uh, oscillators here so basically what this uh, means is we could we could basically add voices to the um, oscillators here so using unison unison controls the voices of an oscillator by setting their frequency and their tuning um, again said that in Jordy tuning so what we can do is if we boost the voices here we've currently got one voice per oscillator if I bump the voices up we hear each oscillator have more um, stacking in terms of the stereo spectrum and it's pitch matching them spreads out more so let's hear what it sounds like and we can control the tuning of those new oscillators We've got different modes here as well, which is cool, but we don't need to look at them too much for now. We can change the amount of the stereo spread on the voice as well, which is really good. Oscillator spreading with unison usually sends the best on sawtooths and stuff like that. So if we remove this one and this one, we'll probably hear it a lot more here. So um, let's have a listen. Um, let me pitch this up. Course tune. If I took the effects off, you'd hear it more so. But this is a great way to, again, change the width of the patch. There we go. So basically very, it's still stereo, but it's um, quite central in terms of its um, unison spread. Okay, let's bring out the sound sources back. Let's pitch this one right up. If we go back in the effects now. Reduce the decay. Actually, the decay is quite short, to be honest. 
before when we were talking about the filters we can we see these filters crop up on a lot of other devices so look we got a high pass here and we got a low pass on the re the reverb so we can basically say at the reverb that we also don't want to have um any high uh, we don't want any so high pass again we're letting the highs pass through or you can think of it as a low cut so we're telling the reverb don't apply don't let any of the information up to 405 hertz go into this reverb probably a good thing to be honest because any reverb below you know sort of 200 150 is starting to again bring in some uh some masking issues and likewise the low pass will let the highs uh will let the lows pass through and get rid of some of the high end stuff i always find that with uh, digital reverbs if you get rid of the high end stuff uh they you get less aliasing um, and less artifacts and they just send a bit more pure so i usually round anything off from about 15 up, to be honest um so let's have a listen Really, really cool. Uh, so there we go. That's that's our first hour done. Crikey, I said that it would go quick. Um, so I'm going to take a, a short five minute break and just see if there's any questions anyone has or come into the chat and answer them and just have a bit of a break in terms of water because it's hard to talk for this long without hydration. So let's see what comments we got here. I'm good. Finished ironing. <laughs> Can I do the same in Falcon or Vital? What you just made with Elif? Absolutely, uh, Jamil. In fact, um, I've got Vital here. Um, I'm pretty sure I can show you how to do the same. If I don't stick to that, I'll not promise it. Um, you absolutely can. You literally just need to enable the oscillators, the envelopes, etc. Yeah. Oh, it's tough work. <laughs> got to stay hydrated. Bit of white noise always sounds good on sounds like this, especially absolutely yes. I couldn't agree more. Uh, we we will get onto the noise noise oscillator for sure. Does ADSR work with Logic Pro? Uh, I presume you mean us as an ADSR the channel. Um, and yeah, I think there is. We have various tutorials and um people who use different software. I think Alina, who does the, I think Alina who does the more the writing and a lot. She's a fantastic K-pop producer, is in Ableton, I think. Uh, and then again, I think we have other people in uh, Logic and, and whatnot. I basically use Studio One for my for my professional stuff in terms of composing. Um, and it's really good for the mastering part, and then Ableton I use for my like um, more artist stuff. Um, thank you so much. I just hopped in, so I'll look over this again. Awesome. Thank you very much as well. These are every second Sunday, uh, Jam Jamal. Um, if you want to make a um, make a mental note of that, or turn on the notifications for other streams as well. Um, yeah. So uh, we've got more terms to get through in the next hour uh hopefully this has been useful so far to some people this as you can see this is a, a, a ginormous topic but i feel like a jargon busting session is incredibly useful i think that this could be a good video for people who are just starting to get into synthesis and they want to know exactly what does envelope do and exactly what does cut off do and you know oscillators exactly it's also about you know what does something mean but how does it do it? And I think that hopefully I've documented that well in terms of, you know, you can see um, how something is, is doing something. So the LFO is modulating that by doing this because it's using this shape. And again, the big thing with all this is why. And again, it, it mainly comes to just making stuff that sounds good and sounding better. The, the more harmonically rich oscillators and the more modulation, not always, but... The reason why I do it is it creates a little bit more interest and it's what makes people's ears 
perk up. Funny enough, Simple Sam, before, as soon as I literally added, like, a couple of, uh, like, filter states, and I think you said, that's it, Sam, uh, patch is done. Because it sounds instantly better, doesn't it? The, the, the funny thing is, the more you add to it, it sounds better, but we're actually not. We're not adding anything to it, or we're subtracting, remember? Because we are taking... We are taking things away from these oscillators and these waveforms because they're so harmonically rich. So what we're doing is we're actually subtracting stuff. So that's another one to remember is we're not adding stuff here. There is a thing called additive synthesis, however. Um. Okay. Oh, hey, MV Beckham. Nice to see you. Didn't know. That. Oh, yeah. Schedule has changed. It's uh, I'm here every second Sunday of the month for two hours. So you're lucky for you. It might feel like a normal stream. You've caught hour two with the start of it, more or less. Um, It's good to have you back. Hope you had a good new year. These are familiar faces and names. So good to see you guys here. Um, Okay, so we're on the second, the second half. If anyone has any questions that they'd like to get in, please, again, I can answer them now. At the, uh, I'll do another five at the end of the following hour. If you're enjoying this, please... Uh, subscribe and give us a like because it helps us out to continue to produce all of this content for free of course because this is um, this is all free and available to you guys um, and hopefully get something out of it um, and again if you want that sense of community and you want to know more about this stuff in depth hop on the discord with hundreds if not thousands of other people who are um, as nerdy as me if not more um, about everything to do with music production and there couldn't be a better time to get into music production and sound design and synthesis with how accessible it is today. you got free doors and controllers cost the same as a loaf of bread. I mean, that might be a slight exaggeration, but it's extremely good time to get into this stuff, you know. There's the link to the Discord on Facebook if you're over there. Hello to anyone on Facebook and Twitch as well. I always feel like I leave you out. Apologies. Um, do you have any real sense? And if so, yes, I do. Um, I th- I'm going to be 100% um, transparent here. I had an absolute behemoth. I had um, an Oberheim OBX. I had a what else? I had a Modal Argon Cobalt 8. I had ooh, an Arturia Polybrute. I had a Micro Freak. I had um, a Moog Sub 37. And I got rid of nearly all of it. The reason being, and this is not a paid or sponsored ad is I work on uh, my professional work outside of doing loads of content is write music for TV and film trailers and advertising and it requires really quick turnarounds and it requires you to maybe have to recall stuff you know like um, a publisher or label might come back and say can you change this and this and this um, and for me to have to go to a synth and be like oh Jesus even if they does store the presets to have to it's just like it, it's not even a headache it's sometimes not possible because you can't remember what on earth you did so the recallability is a huge huge thing the way that you overcome that is digital recallability and I've I've got a couple of 500 series modules for mixing which does that really well from like where's audio and stuff um, I, I know this stuff from um, I used, was it Waldorf I forgot the name of it but yeah they were fantastic synths I think they'd be really really useful um, for creating records where there's no sort of that recallability to worry about or for live use because yeah the Sub 37 Simple Sam awesome sounding machine fat it oscillated sounded enormous and it had presets on it, which was cool. You could store them, but just for workflow purposes, I had to uh, had to come away from a bit. But yeah, definitely going to learn sound design this year from Jamel. That's awesome. I would say learning sound design could open so many doors for you professionally, but also as um, just artistically. You know, it'll allow you to be able to do things that you couldn't. Um, so whether it's getting hold of some presets from ADSR store and breaking them down and seeing, okay, well, how did they get that sound? What is the envelope they're using on the LFO now that people hopefully have an understanding of these um, term, this terminology? Um, that's one way to do it. Or start from scratch with me on these Sunday live streams. Um, and again, two hours is quite a long session. to Ask me anything you want. So ask away if you have any questions whatsoever. Okay, with that out of the way, let's keep going then. So like I said, if you have any questions at all, please um, don't feel afraid to drop them in the comments of either YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook. 
uh, I create techno is thinking, oh, base station. Base station is awesome. Man, that thing is such good value for money. I'm on a tangent now, but yeah, Novation base station, really, really awesome. Would be great for techno, good for house music, electronica, it's awesome. Okay, so uh, let's have a look then at terms that we've addressed. Oscillator, cutoff, envelope, filter, LFO, pole, uh, VCO, DCO, uh, different uh, types of polyphony, monophonic, paraphonic, duophonic, polyphonic. We haven't really talked about that, but essentially a monophonic synth is only a synth that can produce a single pitch note at once, whereas um, a polyphonic a polyphonic synth is a synth that is capable of playing one more than one note at the same time. Exhibit A, pigments. By the way, if you got pigments and you like the sounds that I'm conjuring up today, um, let me know in the comments. Would you like it of if I just gave I could put this preset into the Discord for free? You guys want to download it? You're more than welcome to have access to it. I'm just seeing on YouTube there's every ever oh, occasional lag on the camera. Apologies. Have I heard of rage rap music and type of source? No, I'm afraid I haven't. But um, if you drop a link or something into like the chat or the or our Discord server, I'll always answer questions over there. Um, okay, so getting back into the next uh, the next half hour. Um, right, so yeah, we've looked at um, noise oscillator. This is one that we should pick up on because um, someone was talking about it before. Noise oscillator, basically it's an oscillator that creates signal noise via different voltages or more commonly now samples. Uh, we've even got like a whole utility engine dedicated to it here in Pigments, which is amazing. You could do it in the sample engine as well. So utility engine, if we come in here, we've got noise, one, two, and look at that, we've got another oscillator, which is absolutely awesome. Um, so the white noise here inside of the utility engine, uh, I'll turn off this engine. <laughs> we've still got all the modulators applied to it. Um, so this is a uh, noise. Is it an oscillator though? Simple Sam. Yes, it is an oscillator in a, I guess so. Yeah, because it's a sound source that is oscillating over time. I think in the traditional sense, it's different to just an oscillator that produces a waveform. Um, and all of these are imported samples really. Um, but on a, you know, you have an oscillator on a lot of old synthesizers where there's actually a circuit inside an analog circuit that produces that white noise. Um, so we can use this to get the high-end stuff that really improves the crest factor on your mix. We even have modulation going on here. So I don't have any of the previous analog oscillators. What I can do here is I can send fill this uh, white noise into a separate filler, which is great, which annoyingly can't really do very well here. I can either send it a filler 1 or filler 2. Um, and look, we've got another noise oscillator here, which is even more simple explanation of it. So look, wed, uh, wed, white, red, blue, bring the amplitude up. So that helps the, t the tail of the sound a lot, you know. Get the noise oscillator there in sort of like 10 to 20k and again the whole point of having all these different oscillators is to fill out this the, the frequency spectrum so the white noise is a little bit occupies a different frequency range the most common forms of noise actually is white and pink. Blue and red is not that standard. So yeah, noise is a really good way to thicken and filter the, the frequency spectrum a little bit more again, which is what this whole process is about essentially. Um, so there we go. That is the the concepts inside of the analog engine. Um, if, if we go into Serum here, this is all exactly the same thing. We have our waveforms here and we can preview them. And if we go in analog basic shapes, 
we basically have exactly the same thing. Um, it shows you how quickly you can make a patch, but I could literally just go, okay, um, attack, decay, sustain. I like I like that you can zoom here. You can't do that on other ones. And release, increase the voices, go through the wavetable to create a little bit of a different shape. And instant flume, hey, hey. Apply an LFO to the cutoff. And if you hold, uh, is it if you hold shift, and Alt on a Mac, it again is unipolar. Turn off the, uh, in terms of mode, select envelope. Then it won't cycle. Turn off BPM, we can change the rate. Or trigger, it will recycle. Go through a more complex wavetable again. And there we go. I'm just doing exactly the same thing that I did inside of pigments all over again. And here's another oscillator. I have to click here in Serum and it sends it into this oscill this filter again. Let's go for a um, analog basic shape or a basic sign. Effects. And then boom, we're basically in the same territory as we were in pigments. And I know I spent an hour on it previously because I'm describing as I go, but look at that. We've got the a patch within, you know, a minute. Get rid of the low cut. even go back to this and then again this is very sort of like the sense of flume uses at the minute and he often uses an LFO you don't have to use an LFO just in the cutoff I know that's all we've done so far but you can use an LFO on like the uh, on the tuning of an envelope you know like this um, in fact remove and it'll sound even better on the fine tune like this. Actually, I think I want to go both ways on here. What this does is it kind of makes it a bit more like an analog uh, synth, you know, like a physical synth, because they, this is when it comes back to the whole thing about VCOs. So voltage control oscillators are the building blocks of synths. DCOs are digitally controlled oscillators. They're actually still analog. I think people, a misconception here is that DCOs are digital oscillators. They're digitally controlled oscillators. They're still analog, but they use DSP to control the pitch so that they're more predictable. Basically, people were taking these huge analog synths on tour and they were breaking down. The oscillators were going out of tune. You you actually had a manual tune control on the back with a screwdriver. So DCOs were designed to produce a more affordable like polyphonic synth back in the day. But the funny thing is, we're constantly chasing after this analog sound in the digital domain, the door, and one of the ways you can get that really, really fast um, is basically run something like a modulator into the the, the tuning, and it, it it has a bit of an unpredictable nature now, doesn't it? Yeah, Juno had DCOs exactly. I mean, Juno is one of the best synths of all time, isn't it? <laughs> So there we go, Serum, it's exactly the same beast as before. Coming back to pigments, we're going to dive into pigments now. And I'm going to go straight for the wavetable. And I'm going to go straight for default as well. And yeah, I've never heard of Rage Rap without... Um, yeah, that's another thing. You gotta uh, BC. You gotta wait for the synth to warm up. It's like a valve amplifier, isn't it? The tubes. It's exactly the same concept. It's both nostalgic and um, what's the word? Not very convenient, to be honest. So here we are again in pigments, and also Serum is going to demonstrate exactly the thing I just showed you here. Let's go into a waveform, which is a bit more. Here we go, like stuff like this. Yeah, that, there we go. That That's the one I'm talking about. So this here is a wavetable. And in pigments, um, basically, a wavetable is a, 
a duration of a, a sample, but over time. And a wavetable is no different to what we just looked at with the analog engine. It's exactly the same concept, but the, the difference is that we can control and um, have a little bit more textural and harmonic interest where we can cycle through the actual uh, the wavetable. Um, again, my dictionary de definition here he says as he struggles. So waveforms sorted into in a cycle to create periodic waveforms. So basically more interesting. I'll show you exactly what I mean right now. Basic waveforms, let's come out of that and go into this new Pigments 3.5 folder. So these came with the latest version. Again, get these free if you're a Pigments user. Holy moly, that sounds harsh. So let's just do a filter for the sake of our ears, my ears, your ears. Let's use an LFO, but we're not going to use an LFO on the cutoff. We're going to use an LFO to go through the position of the wavetable. Because if you watch me do this, that is more harmonically rich than any of the other oscillators. The funny thing is, uh, any of the other waveforms, sorry, the, the wavetable is using one oscillator, but it's using a waveform that is more harmonically rich because basically this is being created by stacking multiple sound waves together and that's why it has such a variable sound in terms of each movement opens up a new part of the frequency spectrum a new timbre a new texture so rather than me going through it like that which looks quite primitive caveman i can just modulate the position um, and i can go back and forth like this Again, quite familiar with this now, I'd imagine I can speed up the rate of that. We could just do unipolar, if you just want to go from the start to the end. And again, we can keep layering this to make it more and more and more interesting. So let's have a look at how to do that now. So we're going to layer different types of synthesis together now. So I've got wavetable on engine one. On engine two, I'm going to use just the basic analog engine, the virtual analog. And on utility engine, I'm going to use noise oscillators. I'm going to run them into different filters. I'm going to use different modulators. While we're on that, we've looked at envelopes. These here, we can use these envelopes as modulators. So they take on different shapes and uh, cycles versus LFOs. We can use these LFOs. The function is my favorite thing about pigments. This is basically um, like an LFO on steroids. Um, the best thing is it comes with presets, so watch. We can create our own presets here um, and save them. And we can change, look, we can change the run mode. We can change the actual mode from LFO to an envelope. So this is the most powerful uh, form of modulation. Um, and I, I really love this. This dice thing here changes the predictability and the probability over time. So the function one is awesome. We can use that to control all sorts. So let's try and uh, let's go for multi-mode filter, still multi-mode. And let's go to low pass and use LF, the function control that we've got here to modulate rather than using the one from before. Okay. Okay, I really like that, but for me, this rate's not quite up to scratch. So look, we've got more control again. Sync, sync triplets. So really interesting rhythm. Let's bring in a bit of, well, no, we'll come to the effects in a section. Utility engine. We've got another oscillator here. The reason this is useful is it's already tuned down 12 semitones. It can give us a bit of a sub. Not great for a patch like this. Great for something that's slowly evolving, but for something like this, you don't want to have that. Um, and I suppose actually saying that, you could have it, but you could just apply... Um, you could apply to this oscillator. You could apply the function control so that it... Um, makes the time match the other one. But let's stick with the noise oscillator.
awesome pleased to hear that you're enjoying it uh, a couple of comments i'll try and pick them up as i'm going along uh, yes salem i'm not sure about that um rage rap neither is mv beckham but we're certainly interested converting con maybe concerning dco when i use digital mixer obviously i can have dcso's for a mix bus but they are still analog in the sense that the faders do yeah another perfect example of it nice to have you here as well techno is beautiful dco being a oscillator is not something that you'd find on a mixer uh, i'm not sure what that last word is um and definitely going to watch from the beginning that's awesome great okay i need that to go let's send this in a filter too and give it its own filter I don't want to be taking all the top end off it all the time. Oh, even better. Don't need to do any of that. What if I have 50-50 um, and use a filter? And again, let's use uh, this on here. tune it right up that's the white noise I'm looking for. okay that really fills out the top end there doesn't it it's got a lot of movement and rhythm to it Okay, let's go into the oscillator section here and start to do some more interesting stuff. Um, let's see, these are going to fill the two. Then. Let's have a... No, I need to get the rhythm the same. So for this cutoff, I'll use the same... What about a really interesting filler? So remember, these are all different flavors. Wow, that's a sharp flavor. Form would be cool. Ah, but it's wiped out the air. Uh, it's wiped out the modulation. Let's go for a sem filler. Just a bit more uh, gritty because it's modeled on the sem filler, which, well, it's actually a very smooth filler. the voices of unison okay going into the effects section let's get something cool going here just a bit of spatial effects you can turn down the white noise a bit and the utility engine Ah, the multiband compressor, my favorite. A oh, bit of overlay in there if we don't play them together properly. Okay, and the main thing that we haven't done is our envelope. Let's add in the sequencer an arpeggiator. shader. So an arpeggiator, this is not really a massive synth, or, well it is a big thing to be honest, but it's more of a device. Uh, so it's basically what happens is you have a group of notes and it's played in a sequence via the algorithm that you use here. Um, so for example, I say I want to play 16th note divisions. do is can tell the uh, arpeggiator to pick a um, exactly I want it to go up or down 
or just up or random. Okay, now I'm liking the the sound. I'm going to introduce that sub oscillator. Introduce some distortion. It's using a soft clipping algorithm. Actually, let's have a look. Maybe I might do distortion dynamics. Leave the distortion off. So here we go. Here's is a cool preset using all three different uh, of the oscillators. Okay. I'm going to use one more thing. I'm going to use a second function. Um, let's go in the presets and um, in fact, I tell you what, I could draw my own. So if I pick a mode. And again, I'll just make, I'll do that again, but I want it to become more interesting like that. Let's use that on the uh, the size. Ah, see, there's certain things they won't let you modulate here, which is a bit peculiar. And let's change the rate. It's uh, a little bit more. Well, change the scale. Okay, here we go. Okay, and let's add one more reverb because again, you allow more than one reverb. Okay, this is where some saturation would really be quite useful. I don't want to clip the waveform. Just parallel, bring, blend it into parallel. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So this is using this uh, oscillator, which is really awesome. That one's a bit different than the other ones, to say the least. Okay, so that addresses the wavetable thing, but I'm I'm just trying to give you a bit of an idea as to what you might want to do with it. I don't want to just talk about what is. I want to show how and why. So the reason I use the wavetable is you've got that, um, you know, it's, it's it, because the duration of it over time, we're modulating through it. We can literally see it happening right now in real time. We're getting a lot of interesting harmonics over time, a lot of interesting textures, timbres. So blending that with the analog engine, um, the noise oscillators, creates some really, really interesting presets and patches. Um, so that's a lot of fun. There's another couple of different forms of synthesis as well. So hey, hey we're going to go back to the default patch again. Here we are back at gr uh, base, base layer. 
Uh, the other form we're going to talk about is uh, harmonic. Uh, they've called it the harmonic engine. I guess it uses harmonics to build the um, the oscillator's waveform. But this is basically additive synthesis. So the funny thing is they've got additive synthesis, but in a subtractive, um, but with inside of a su subtractive synthesis engine, because pigments is a wavetable synth, but it's also many others. But at the, the heart of it, it's subtractive synthesis. But I guess if you would just use this module on its own, this is additive synthesis. So additive is the op complete opposite to subtractive. What we're doing here is we're combining multiple sine waves. So we're combining multiple sine waves to produce complex textures. It's quite similar to FM synthesis, and we have an entire stream on FM synthesis where I use FM8 from Native Instruments and DX7 from Arturia. Probably not going to have time to look at um, FM, if I'm honest. I really thought, wow, two two hours, world's most, I'll be able to do a lot here, but man, it flies by. Um, so, yeah, additive uses multiple um, sine waves to stack in the frequency region. So although that doesn't sound like a sine, a sine wave, it is a sine wave. If we change some of the, um, the partials here in the window, we'll hear the change. Okay, tell me that's not a sine wave. So what you do is you use a sine wave and you stack another sine wave on top of that sine wave. And again. I'm sure Studio One has um, like a, it has some sort of um, like really, really useful, if you can find it. Spectrum meter. No, scope. Even better. Okay. So here we go. This is uh, the scope inside the Studio One. If I just pin it. You guys can see that, can't you? So here we go. Bring it back down. Oh, you can't see it's behind it. If I look at this uh, waveform here. If I increase the scale, look at that. It's a completely pure sine wave, isn't it? No uh, additional harmonics. When I start to increase uh, the partials, look at that. We're uh, getting into triangle territory. And we're going well past triangle territory with some wave folding. And the wave is becoming more unstable but more harmonically rich. Right to the point of this is turning into like a sawtooth. So additive synthesis is uh, the complete opposite, isn't it? But this really makes the mind boggle because when we come back to subtractive synthesis with voltage controlled or digitally controlled oscillators, those waveforms, you know, square waves, sine, uh, square waves, triangle waves, um, okay, any any wave, or it, they're basically just sine waves stacked on top of each other to create more rich waveforms. So, in theory, you can do every sound possible with just a sine wave, um, and that's the power of additive: is it make you uh, unique wavetable sounds that you can't achieve with just a traditional uh, envelope uh, with a traditional waveform. So, for example, these wavetables here, you might be wondering, well, you know, those you've got those basic ones, but how? In fact, if you go into natural additive, look at this. This wavetable here, we got it in two D mode as well. This here is the combination of multiple sine waves being stacked. That's what additive synthesis is. So that is an interesting one and is a, is a huge rabbit hole there. And I always find that additive is a great way for um, glassy sounds, um, quite harsh sounds, but also for new sound palettes. And then the other side is FM, which I find is probably the best for those really, um, really glassy. And again, some like hard FM basses sound, but again, I don't think we'll have time for FM, sadly. <laughs> We can increase the partials again though. So look, we got eight partials here. If we go to 512, and hopefully my performance meter doesn't mind. Okay, it's okay. Look at how monically rich that is. So here we are creating our own uh, shapes. We've got here, we've got spectrums, and we can use the spectrums 
with inside of the added dimension, basically like filters. So if I remove this filter here and turn off all these other things, I'm just going to use the added dimension. What we can do is if I increase the depth, this is a filter that's going to be applied now um, to, this is going to be applied to this additive harmonic engine. So this is filtering the sound source again, working as an envelope. We can target different sections of it. Really, really cool, and they all have slightly different characteristics, and we can even apply a slope to them. So think of that like... Basically, it's like a filler. That's the way I describe it. Uh, then we got shape. It's a combination of basically changing the odd and the even harmonics, and that's the difference between waveforms is their harmonic structure. We change the tilt. We can see it narrows here. And yeah, there we go. That's basically additive synthesis. I'm absolutely touching the iceberg there, but you can layer that with other engines and it gets more exciting and more interesting. Just picking up some comments here. I used to use, I used to make that sound in alchemy back in the day. Oh, right, yeah. How additive synthesis is different than wavetable synthesis? Well, wavetable synthesis um, and additive are different in the sense that additive literally just involves sine waves. There's no other... Uh, waveform or oscillation that comes into it, whereas a wavetable could be a combination of synthesized waveforms and literally samples. So you could, waveforms could, uh, sorry, wavetable could be a collection of field recordings or samples. With the wavetable, I could drop anything into there. That's the beauty of pigments as well. I could go to, so for example, I could go to ADSR on my hard drive, find a sample. It could be anything. It could be a drum. It could be me hitting a washing machine, believe me, I've done it. <laughs> and you can drag it into here, and there you go, that's your wavetable. Whereas a harmonic engine here, again, I would rather just refer to it as the additive engine. This is using pure sine waves. I hope that answers your uh, uh, question, Divyanch, on uh, Twitch. Nice to have you with us. Uh, before Apple bought them. Oh, yeah, they did bought, uh, buy them out. Didn't they? Could you slightly increase the volume of your voice? Um, I can do. I don't know if it's an issue on your end, but so far I think it's been okay. But that's me going to louder volume there. Hopefully it's not too bad. Like, I hope that's not clipping or anything. So additive, that's honestly, I'll probably just leave that there because there's too much info to cover in 20 minutes. Okay, we're going to dip a toe into my favorite type of synthesis and many people's favorite types of synthesis, which is the... Uh, continually evolving beast of he says as he literally can't find it uh, wave table synthesis I should probably address the fact that we're working with sample synthesis thank you Divian really appreciate that thanks for watching on Twitch as well it's good to have some different platform diversity um, so granular I'm sure this is a term that people have heard it's became incredibly prop popular as of recently uh, and granular basically is less granular wouldn't coexist on its own it has to have audio being fed through it and in this example here this is with the final engine here we've looked at all of them sample engine well sample synthesis is another form of synthesis but really what you're doing here is you're not working with vcos or dcos or wavetables or sine waves with inside of additive synthesis or if it's fm synthesis working with carriers and modulators sample based synthesis is working with samples so this is a recording of a grand piano as you can hear, it sounds remotely like a grand piano. Getting carried away with some house, some piano house music. So, granular. Uh, again, got a good dictionary definition here for you guys. Uh, here we go. So granular, it works on micro. It works on a micro time scale, and it breaks audio into tiny segments. So if you imagine this piano sample here, if you imagine dividing up into tons and tons and tons of micro samples, what it does is it uses its granular engine goes through all of these, and these are the grains. So let's have a listen to what the grand piano sounds like now. 
wow no longer sounds like a grand piano it's completely you know <laughs> radicalized <laughs> So it's an incredibly um, it's an incredibly sophisticated concept to really break the mold in terms of what's conventional within synthesis. So let's have a listen to Bellaphone beforehand. Great samples here inside of Pigments. You can get Pigments if you're not already using it on our ADSR store. Um, and if you're enjoying this, guys, please hit on the notifications for future streams. Sound Design Sessions is every second Sunday of the month for two whole hours. So if you have any questions or any ideas you'd like to look at for the following one, hop onto our Discord server and leave us a recommendation for the next stream title. We actually do take um, you know, your suggestions for... Um, streams. So if you have an idea or a concept or something you'd really like to dive into for two whole hours with me, let us know on the Discord server and be notified of any other streams as well by hitting subscribe. We've got over 300,000 subscribers now, which is awesome. So here we have the granular engine selecting different grains of this Bellaphone sample. And again, pigments being the visual beast that it is, we can see it happening in real time. We can change the rate at which the uh, grain will be uh, the speed of it. So it's currently 200 milliseconds. You can hear the grains now, literally. And if we change the hertz, this is a bit like the LFO again. I think we can change from hertz to, again, different rhythmic figures. Very, very interesting indeed. So this is a completely different concept, really, the others, but it's very, very interesting. S people who use this a lot, a lot of feature bass artists, people like Flume, Disclosure, well, it's not really feature bass, but uh, Rufus de Sol, Flume, uh, Madion. Yeah, it's very, very popular amongst those guys, and I think it's uh, somewhat defining the sound of their uh, sort of modern electronic dance. <laughs> Yeah, Paul is awesome, I love it. Yeah, cool concept, uh, always low. If you, sadly, the comment will probably get lost in YouTube while I might make a mental note of it. If you hop on our Discord link and drop that into the sound design channel or general chat, we'd literally be happy to probably look at an entire stream around that, which would be awesome. So please, please, these suggestions are really interesting. We could make an entire track over two hours using granular. Okay, and then as always, the beauty here is when you start to layer this with other things. So our Bellaphone layered with another engine. Let's filter that guy. And the only thing I want to do here is change the course tuning to 12 notes. And we can bring out this sort of glassy nature of it with the Molly Band. Let's apply that um, a low pass, let's change it to a high pass. Okay, let's use a function to change the rate of the granular's density, okay? Like this. And... And let's change the rate of it. So granular, again, 
I feel like this this stream was our first Sunday sound design sessions. This is always 6 p.m. UK time, 10 p 10 a.m. Pacific time. It seems like we had a lot of people for the first hour, and still there's people hanging on here, which is fantastic. Hopefully, you're getting something out of this. So if you are, uh, give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It helps us a lot. Um, I think that this has been a good jargon busting session for people to learn the what, the how, the why of all of the terminology that surrounds synthesis and sound design. But what could be good is maybe if we then went and did a deep dive into some of these topics, like um, Always Low was suggesting it, um, I think something like, you know, focus on FM, focus on granular, focus on wavetable. How do you make your own wavetables? We could do one of these every month for two hours and show the concept from the start right through to building a truck. If you have anything like that, I think, you know, let us know on our Discord server. That's the best place for you to give us the ideas. Um, watching this stream, am I right in thinking pigments has different number of synthesis types? Yeah, hi Lee, thanks for tuning in. Yes, many, many different synthesis types. We've been covering them all today. If you're just tuning in, uh, feel free to scroll back. And um, I've covered the analog engine, where we're looking at oscillators and... Uh, you know, harmonically rich waveforms, but quite basic in comparison to the wavetable, which we then went into. We've been in the sample engine, we've been in the harmonic engine, looking at additive synthesis. So we've covered literally most bases here. We've looked at filters, envelopes, LFOs. We're using the function generator here for a little bit more freedom, a bit more control. And um, we've got about 10 minutes left, guys. I can't believe how fast this has gone. If you have any questions for these last 10 minutes, please get them in. Um, I'm more than happy to answer anything. I'll see them as they're coming in now. So let's finish off with our granular patch for these last 10. If you have any questions and you know, you, you've know you caught the stream a day or two late, then you can let us know the question in the Discord. There's a channel dedicated to this topic, the Sound Design channel. And if you at Sound Envision Me, um, I will get back to you if you give me that tag. It'll come up on my devices instantly, and I'll use your reply uh, very quickly. Oh, you missed the sample, the granny a little bit. <laughs> Tune back if you need to, but it's probably something we've watched before. Simple Sam, because we have done ones on it, I suppose. I was thinking a cool stream. I don't know if you guys would be in this, but a cool stream could be um, creating your very own instruments. So, say, in Ableton Simpler or in Studio One Sample Engine or Contact literally making instruments from raw recordings like create your own instrument your own vst your own sample yeah i mean you could literally even turn it into a profitable <laughs> asset but i don't know if that would be a cool one to look at because it covers a lot of interesting concepts you know <laughs> Yeah, I think that'd be a cool one. You know, if I, I was thinking about that the other day, I know it's a month off, but if you like that Hydra, I think that could be a cool one. Showing like from you know, I've got my samples here. Let's turn them into an instrument, um, or something like that. Shout out to all the words watching on a Sunday. Educate themselves. Proud of you and can be too. Because who does this other than people who take this stuff enough serious? Ah, uh, thank thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate. It. I think we're all very similar people here. Um, you know. We all like the same sort of stuff. I need that contact tutorial. I do it in sampler and simpler and pigments, but I need the contact love for real. Well, we could do it in multiple for two hours. We could probably build a, an instrument in contact. We could build it in simpler. We could do it in pigments. We could, well, I suppose pigments is already an instrument. I'm on about maybe making our very own thing. But if you like that, maybe leave that as another title of somewhat in, in the sound design channel. That would be really, really cool. It doesn't even have to be contact. There's other free samplers. Uh, can you make a stream? Can you make a stream in which you remake some songs suggested? Actually, that is a stream that we have done before. Um, so we've done a couple of these uh, sort of sound-alike streams. I think we've done one on the weekend, one on sort of Odessa, Future Soul, uh, Future Soul, Future Bass, and there might have been another artist. I can't quite remember, but I think we have done. I think we've done a couple like that, and they were really popular. People loved them. Yeah. Oh, we did one on cyberpunk and synthwave really trending for this year as well with the whole metaverse and 
virtual reality. So, yeah, God, you guys have got some awesome ideas here. Honestly, I feel like I don't want these ideas to go to waste. It's not shameless promo, but please, if they go on the Discord, they'll stay there. Once this once this is done, the chat, the restream chat will probably disappear. So if you make a note of it in the Discord, not only going to be part of the community, but we can literally turn these titles into full two-hour sound design streams. I have done one on granular before, yeah. Another main stuff, only that part of pigments is still a bit unclear. Okay, yeah, could dive in it. Cool, we could even make that a course on ADSR, perhaps, like... A whole hour course on uh, on granular synthesis. Uh, I need to learn contact instruments. Yeah, uh, honestly, guys, I spend the best part of my entire day in contact because I do uh, composing for TV and I do make a couple of my own instruments in there, but I I do use contact a ton because it's the sample king when it comes to mainly when well, I use it for the orchestral. Uh, libraries in particular. I think we'll finish here and just finish with the comments, guys. Um, building an instrument contract, we could maybe we could we come yeah exactly comparing it against freeware. This is for Sando sampler, and there is another one called oh man I've forgotten. It's by a game called Dave Dave something. Is it like oh I've completely forgotten the name of it. Apologies. My new sound bank for Serum on the ADSR store. Everyone who are oh, awesome. What's it called, Hydrotech? I'll, I'm up, absolutely going to have to check that out. It's great to hear that you're doing well in, in sound design. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's what I've been hearing. Thanks, Brent. I'll dive deeper into contact. Yeah, awesome. Um, always low. And cool suggestion you had before as well. Uh, if you want to dive into the past sound design sessions, yeah, there's a beastie playlist with about, oh God, I don't know, 20. 20 to 30 hours worth of sound design sessions on it. Uh, new pack available. Oh, electronic presets for Serum. Oh, nice. I might have to pick that up. Electronic is one of my favorite things. That's awesome. Nice one, yeah. Good to see people that are doing this. This, that's. I think that feels like mission accomplished. I know Hydrotech was already learning, and well, he's already doing sound design before the stream, but he seems to have really put it up through the gears recently and he even had a free sample pack again on the discord more reasons to go on the discord the, the community the fr there's a lot of free content on there i linked a couple of ideas in the channel awesome it's on the sound design channel always low that's great if it's there it'll be seen it'll be um, considered for f the next stream or future streams so even if there's multiple ideas that's awesome i'm um, gonna have to check that out larry we have to check that out so this is, the Hydra's pack is called uh, Lost Cinematic. Awesome. Yeah, 3D on the Discord. Awesome. Everyone, <laughs> we take not what you did in the pack. Is good. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the end of the two hours. I can't believe how fast it's gone. Hope that you've all had some use out of this. Um, I think we'll just do an absolute flyby um, recap. So, go on to my beautiful larger icon here's everything we've covered if um a fellow studio one use it yeah i do use studio one and uh, ableton but studio one is my primary door so let's have a look then oscillator these are the terminology that we've broken down today the jargon if you've missed this and you're like oh man you can go back and watch it again you can uh, help us out by giving a thumbs up to this you can suggest future streams join our discord um, and if you like the products that i've used in this day they're all on the adsr store and big thanks to um, our ADSR moderator today in the chat, uh, Brent Bishop, for helping out. It's great to have him as part of the team here. So we've looked at envelope, cutoff, oscillator, additive synthesis, ADSR, uh, arpeggiator, envelope, filter, FM, LFO, pole, VCO, DCO, monophonic, paraphonic, Duophonic, polyphonic, multi -tombral. Oh, we didn't have time for that one. Apologies. Resonance, waveforms, sine wave, sawtooth, subtractive, triangle, yep, unison, VCA, wavetable, pulse width, granular. Okay, we didn't look at physical modeling and we didn't look at FM. So we missed about three, but there's more to be, you know, there's more I can do in the future. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. This has been really fun. It's been awesome to be back hosting the Sunday Sound Design Sessions. This is every second Sunday of the month now, so it's once a month, but it's a longer duration. Um, I think it's a nice way to finish off the week and also it winds down the week, uh, I'd imagine. For a lot of people, you might be just chilling now. Um, and then also it's a good way to 
push you into next week as well with your creativity in mind. So if you've enjoyed this, guys, stay tuned for the next one in precisely a month's time. Um, and if you have any ideas, we're always there on Discord in the Sound Design channel. And notable thanks to all of the regulars. I'm sure you all know who you are. Um, yes, nice work, Brent, and other Brent. There's two Brents in the house now. <laughs> Um, okay, awesome. So, guys, I will catch you in the next one. I hope you all have a fantastic week. And uh, let us know how you get on with these concepts. I shall see you in the next stream. Catch you later.